In this video, we'll talk about properties of estimators. Um, we'll talk about bias, variance, and mean squared error. So, you know, we've talked about, you know, this entire chapter about how to estimate parameters, right? We had MLE, um, MOM, and MAP, right? Maximum likelihood, method moments, uh, maximum a posteriori. And so now we would like to see, you know, sometimes they give us different estimates, right? And so we want to know when is one estimator better than another? And is there one that's best in every aspect? And so we're going to define some properties of estimators or metrics which tell us how good an estimator is. And there's many different things we could, you know, compare to see which one is better. And I, it's actually pretty rare that, you know, it might be pretty rare to be better than uh, everything else in every single category. But we'll talk about some of these properties that we would look, like to look at. So first is bias. So if theta hat is an estimator for theta, okay, the parameter, the bias of theta hat is uh, defined to be the expected value of theta hat minus theta. And so if the bias is zero, um, or equivalently, like rearranging, you get expected value of theta hat is theta. Right? That, that's, that seems like a good thing, right? Um, then theta hat is an unbiased estimator of theta. If the bias is positive, then theta hat typically overestimates theta, right? The expected value of theta hat is typically greater than theta. Um, and you know, same for negative, we'll typically underestimate theta. So we do want our estimators to be unbiased, meaning you know that um, the bias is zero. So let's see some examples, right? So remember we did some examples of um, estimating theta from a uniform zero theta. We got that the maximum likelihood estimate was actually the max of all the samples, and the method of moments estimator was two times the sample mean. And both of them, um, at least the second one to me, uh, makes sense. Um, intuitively, because you know I expect you know the average to be halfway, right? The expected value of zero to theta is theta over two, and so kind of like t times two makes it kind of an unbiased estimate. So let's compute these um, expected values of theta hat to compute the bias. So recall that the density, okay, so we're of the largest order statistic from five point ten. Like we're trying to compute the distribution uh, or the PDF of the largest of n uniform zero to theta. Um, so we use our general formula, and you know our expected value of our estimator is the expected value of the largest of n uniform zero theta, and so we just integrate zero to theta of um, you know this is the definition of expectation right it's the value times its density function which is up here, and if you do this, um, you'll see that the expected value of the maximum likelihood estimate is actually not quite theta okay but almost, and the expected value of the method of moments estimator, you can do that yourself as well, actually is exactly theta. And that's kind of the definition of method of moments, right? That we set the first, the true true first moment equal to the first sample moment. So we kind of expect it to be unbiased. Um, as So you can see that here we systematically underestimate uh, theta, OK? Because n over n plus 1 is less than 1. However, if n goes to infinity, right, like 100 over 100, 101, that's actually pretty much the same as just theta, right? This basically becomes one. Um, but yeah, so it's a tiny bit biased. Um, and so you could actually think of correcting this, you know, estimate by multiplying by n plus one over n uh, to get rid of this thing. So you might, it won't be the maximum likelihood estimate, but you could come up with a new estimate, which is n plus one over n times x max. And so that your, your coefficients would cancel and you would get an unbiased estimate. Um, so yeah, so here method of moments is quote, better because of this, because it's unbiased. However, there's a problem, right, which is, uh, well, not right, but um, let's say our samples are 1, 9, and 2, okay? Then our maximum likelihood estimate would just be 9, it's the largest of all of them, and our method of moments estimate is 2 times the average. And it turns out if you do this, you actually get 8. And the problem is, you know, this is supposed to be uniform from 0 to theta, right, or 0 to 8, but we somehow generated the sample 9, and so actually, that's not possible. So there's a problem with our MO method of moments estimator sometimes, which is that it might not actually work out, at least for this uniform zero theta case, even though it's unbiased. So that's kind of weird. Um, OK, so we'll, we'll see a random picture. Then we'll do one more for the exponential. So um, we're actually going to find out that um, the MLE and method of moments estimator for exponential are just 1 over the sample mean. And you should pause and think about why that makes sense. or um, or do it yourself. Um, and we're going to ask, is it unbiased? Uh, so we're going to try to compute the expected value of this theta hat. 
Um, actually, it turns out, okay, so don't worry if you don't understand this part, but um, you need to have watched 6.3 6 um, with Jensen's inequality, because you need to know what a convex function is and, and Jensen's inequality. But basically, this function is a convex function, meaning that it like always goes, uh, so that, that, that means all the lines between two points are above the graph. So you can kind of think of, this is a multivariable function, but you can think of it like 1 over x, right? 1 over x kind of looks like this, and it's convex. Um, and so by Jensen's inequality, the expected value of g of these things is greater than g of the expected values. And so the expected value is equal to this, right? Which is at least this by Jensen's inequality here. We plug in e of xi instead, and, and then we get theta. So actually, it turns out that expected value of theta hat always is at least Okay, theta. So it's always an overestimate um, using this inequality. Um, yeah, even though it's the maximum likelihood estimate and the method of moments estimate. Okay, so finally we'll talk about uh, mean squared error. So like you know, being on on target is great, but you also want to make sure you don't have high variance, right? You want to be pretty accurate, right? So this variance and mean squared error will tell us how accurate we are. The variance of an estimator is you know just the definition of variance, right? E of you know, the, the variable minus the expected value quantity squared. And the mean squared error is defined to be um, between theta hat and theta, which is the expected squared deviation of theta from theta hat from theta. And so you'll see that if theta has unbiased, that means e of theta hat is equal to theta, then the mean squared error is actually equal to the variance. And with some algebra, you can show that the mean squared error is the variance plus the bias squared, actually. And we'll show that on the next slide. But so we, we said, so we want accuracy, right? We want. Um, our, our estimators to be on, on the dot, which is unbiasedness. And we want mean squared error to be low, right? We want this squared deviation to be low, which involves minimizing both variance and the bias, right? And so you can see that we want to have low MSE uh, and low variance in general. Okay, so here's the proof. It's not too bad. It kind of looks messy, but it's only a few lines um, to prove this. And yeah, those are the, the first few metrics we're going to use to um, evaluate our estimators.